The world of displays was revolutionized when the first LCD was introduced. With its HD display and slim design, it was a huge upgrade from the old chunky CRT monitors, plus the ease of portability was a bonus. LCDs eventually gave rise to LEDs and OLEDs, and even though they were unique in their design, they're slowly striving towards one goal, to have the single best display in the world. But who's winning this race? Stay tuned to find out. When liquid crystal displays, or LCDs, replaced cathode ray tubes, or CRT monitors, and televisions in the early 2000s, they caused a stir in the consumer electronics sector because of their availability to full display color and high resolution. People almost lost their minds when they first saw the flat panel LCDs instead of the chunky, clunky CRTs at the time. A white light backlight, two polarized layers that steer the light waves, and a liquid crystal layer that bends the waves in response to an applied current make up the fundamental building blocks of LCD technology. Images can be created by manipulating the amount of light that passes through the liquid crystals by varying their direction, and pixels on these displays can show a broad spectrum of colors, since they are segmented using RGB color filters. But early liquid crystal displays weren't perfect. A lot of energy was wasted since the backlight wasn't adequately filtered before it reached the panel. Because the light was directed, it was also difficult to get pure blacks, and had limited viewing angles. But these days, significant improvements in LCD technology have been introduced to remedy these deficiencies. Switching to a grid of smaller light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, sometimes called mini-LED displays, was a major step forward. By illuminating only the critical regions, this enabled nearly flawless blacks and better control over backlighting, leading to significant power savings. Adding quantum dots to color filters was another step forward. Quantum dots can efficiently and vividly reproduce colors by converting light from one hue to another. To improve color accuracy and brightness, modern high-end LCDs use quantum dot technology in conjunction with mini-LED backlighting. Even more exciting possibilities lie ahead for LCDs in the future. It's believed that LCD panels could integrate millions of LEDs, considerably improving their performance thanks to continuing research and development. LCDs' ease of manufacturing and longevity keep them popular, even if alternative display technologies have advanced. All in all, liquid crystal displays have replaced cumbersome cathode ray tube monitors as the standard for many electronic gadgets. Thanks to developments like quantum dot integration and mini-LED illumination, LCDs have overcome many of their early shortcomings, and they're now one step closer to being the perfect display solution. Looking at how organic light-emitting diode, or OLED technology, has evolved in contrast to liquid crystal display shows a convergence trend, with OLED starting to provide results that are similar to LCDs, yet having its own set of advantages and disadvantages. Tiny drops of a specific organic material are deposited onto a surface via vapor deposition to create subpixels in an OLED screen, which may be individually controlled by passing electricity through them. Originally, OLED was split down the middle. On one hand, there was Samsung's AMO LED, which was geared for smaller screens like smartphones. On the other hand, LG's WO LED was created for larger screens. The two technologies are merging though, and the future looks bright for tablets, laptops, and other devices with mid-sized screens. There's no need for backlights, crystals, or color filters in cell phones that use organic light-emitting diode screens to directly generate red, green, or blue hues. In close-ups of the screen, one can see individual light dots, a reflection of the simple display technology. While problems such as the blue material wearing out faster do remain, the arrangement of these dots is tuned according to human sensitivity to different hues. Because of the difficulties associated with using individually colored OLED diodes on bigger screens, LG's WOLED technology has become the industry standard for monitors and televisions. When combined with an RGB filter, white organic light emitting diode technology produces a rainbow of colors, essentially giving each pixel its own white backlight. Thinness, transparency, flexibility, power efficiency, great contrast, deep 
blacks and fast response times are just a few of the benefits offered by both types of OLED panels. However, smartphone style OLED screens are technically purer. On the other hand, OLEDs have their drawbacks and will need a lot of improvement before they can be considered the best display type. Although OLED and LCD technology are different in many respects, they are merging to produce the same thing. To reach the next level of display technology, OLED development must address both its strengths and weaknesses. Now, most of the problems with organic light-emitting diode lights stem from the fact that they are organic. This doesn't imply that they are meticulously farmed without the use of pesticides, rather it indicates that they are composed of hydrocarbons, which can be problematic in and of itself. For example, the materials deteriorate rapidly when exposed to air, and displaying a single brilliant image on them for an extended period of time causes a phenomenon known as burn-in wherein an image is permanently burned onto your screen. By slightly rearranging static content, for instance, most modern gadgets can help prevent these burn-ins. Now, the main issue with OLED devices in the past was that they couldn't support very bright screens. Over the years, however, both LG and Samsung have figured out how to make their OLED screens considerably brighter without actually straining the OLEDs anymore. The LG-developed new microlens array, or MLA technology, concentrates light that would otherwise diffuse across the surface by superimposing a grid of microscopic lenses over an LED panel. This lens array passively increases brightness by around 60%, without increasing the amount of power being sent to the pixels, which is great for both the battery life and the cost of your electricity bill. On the other hand, Samsung came up with their TV panels to put quantum dots on top of LG's OLED implementation instead of color filters. Samsung is calling them QD OLED TVs, and they are beautiful to look at. Just like LG, Samsung begins with a single colored organic LED. However, theirs is blue rather than white. To make the blue subpixel pass through unimpeded, while the other two subpixels are made extremely bright by adding, you guessed it, quantum dots. Since Samsung's OLED TVs don't need to pass through color filters, we can get the same three main colors as LG's, but with far brighter individual output. It would be incredible to see a QD OLED TV with microlens array technology for the ultimate OLED experience. The future of OLEDs seems promising. There'll be four significant advancements in the near future of this technology. First, Samsung will introduce tandem OLEDs, which are two OLED layers layered to provide four times the lifetime and twice the brightness. This is an enormous step forward in display technology and is set to make its debut on iPads in 2024. Second, with four times greater electricity to light conversion, UDC's blue PHOLED materials offer a game-changing improvement in efficiency and brightness. Industry heavyweights like LG and Samsung are expected to incorporate this innovation into their panels by the year 2025. Third, a paradigm shift has been achieved with the advent of micro-organic light-emitting diode screens, which allow for extremely high-resolution dis displays perfect for virtual reality applications like Apple's Vision Pro headset. And finally, Samsung is looking at using gallium nitride nanorods in QD OLED TVs instead of blue organic LEDs, which would provide all the benefits of OLEDs without the burn-in problems. This innovation boom highlights the efforts of OLED manufacturers to address burn-in issues and increase brightness, whereas LCD manufacturers concentrate on shrinking the size of the backlight and improving the colors. Micro-LED SYN evolution is reflected in the merging of these technologies. Nevertheless, tiny LEDs stand out as an ideal illustration of this convergence. Micro-LEDs, in contrast to OLEDs, use individual physical LEDs, allowing for unmatched brightness with no burn-in hazards. Although there are still some practical obstacles, micro-LEDs are conceptually in line with the future of displays. Problems with alignment, high prices, and restricted availability prevent them from broad acceptance, which in turn prevents them from becoming the pinnacle of display technology, despite improvements shown at trade exhibitions. Therefore, micro-LEDs are the perfect display solution, but their constraints prevent them from reaching their full potential. 
However, Tantine OLEDs, improved OLED materials, micro OLED displays, and quantum dot OLED televisions based on gallium nitride are all on the horizon for organic light emitting diode technology, which bodes well for revolutionary steps forward. The combination of organic light emitting diode and light emitting diode technology is at the heart of these advancements, which both aim to produce long lasting, colourful screens. Despite their apparent superiority, mini LEDs face real world obstacles that prevent them from being widely used in displays. Innovation, convergence, and the drive for technological perfection are shaping the industry's landscape as the pursuit of perfect display persists. Right now, businesses have to physically place millions of LEDs next to each other for each subpixel, which is incredibly error prone and takes an inordinate amount of time. Experts predict that mass market mini LED TVs could be available in the next 5 to 10 years, thanks to new production techniques that are now under development. But what do you think? Which technology will win the race for the perfect display? Let us know in the comments below.